The purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate how T accounts work. And so we have all these blank T accounts right now. We have these 11 transactions. We have the previous month's balance sheet. And so these numbers are where the T accounts start. And then we have, we're going to create a trial balance. So that's blank for the following month. Notice the, uh, this is a balance sheet for August. So we're going we're gonna to create the balance sheet for September. And be before we do that, after we finish the T accounts, we create a trial balance first and then the balance sheet. So we do need all of these amounts to start the T accounts out. And I have a copy of that, do that document right here. So these numbers are where all the T accounts will start. Now, assets are normally debit balance accounts, so all these will have a, a balances that start on the left. The liabilities and owner equity are normally credit balance accounts, so their opening balance would normally be on the right side, the credit side. So bank starts at 45,780, so we will put 45,780 here. Uh, account to have two accounts receivable. HGDHS uh, owes the company $2,500. This is a company that sells art supplies. So they're selling them to a high school or a college. And so this account receivable is $2,500. Uh, Main College owes this company $1,235. Uh, supplies, uh, the company has at the beginning here $32,700 worth of art supplies and $8,740 worth of equipment. Uh, liabilities. Uh, we the company owes Painting Paradise eighty four hundred and sixty dollars. So if we put eighty four sixty here. Uh, owes Drawing R Us fifty three ten. So we put fifty three ten here. And the Easel Store owes them ninety three hundred twenty five dollars. So ninety three twenty five goes there. Uh, the bank loan we owe the bank thirty seven eight hundred. And uh, our Oak has $30,060 in capital invested in the company. Uh, T accounts don't need dollar signs, don't need commas, don't need a decimal unless you want to get into uh, cents. Uh, so you would normally leave the numbers just like this. So let's take a look at the transactions. Purchase $1,240 of paints from Painting Paradise. Now on credit means the bank account is not uh, affected. Uh, we're going to pay later. That's what on credit means. So this company already owes Painting Paradise 8460, and that's a credit balance account. So they're going to owe $1,240 more. So we would put 1240 right there. Now um, you never ever have just one entry. So we've changed. We've increased the liability by $1,240. So what would change is either another liability could go down or an asset could go up. So if uh, the liability increased 1240, then the asset that changes is um, this company now has more art supplies, more supplies. So the 1240 would go right here. Uh, this company is in the business of selling art supplies, so if they buy paints, that would be called a supply. So that would change by $1,240. So that's the balancing thing right there. Next, the owner invested $10,000 of his own money in the business, which would mean that it would go into the bank account. So we'll put $10,000 there. And then, so in this case, there's going to be more owners. The, the, this person's going to have more owner's equity, so we put $10,000 there. So the uh, owner's equity increased by $10,000, and the bank increased by $10,000. Again, that's the balancing thing. Two things have to change. or There could be more than two, but often it's two. Harding Gordon District High School purchased $575 worth of supplies. So our supplies are going to go down $575. And they purchased it on credit. So the bank account doesn't change, but their accounts, uh, the accounts receivable, their accounts payable or our accounts receivable is going to change. And so um, they owe $2,500 at the beginning of this. They're going to owe $575 more. So we put $575 right there. Paid $800 of the account payable to Painting Paradise. So this is Painting Paradise's account payable. This company owes them these two amounts. So we're going to pay off part of that debt. So this is going to go down 800 So the company owes them $800 less. And of course, in order to pay them, it has to come out of bank. So we put $800 as a credit to bank. So bank goes down 800 and the liability goes down 800 
purchased a computer which we'll call equipment for $1130 and paid cash. So 1130 would be a credit, so the bank account is going down 1130. I, I clicked the debit side first, but it's a, it's a credit. And so the equipment is going to go up 1130. So notice in this case for the balancing part, uh, one asset went down 1130, another asset went up 1130, so it's still balanced. Cash sales for the month amounted to $6,375. So cash is going to go up 6375 Now, in order to balance this, the owner's equity is going to increase. See, selling stuff, that's the business, what the business is in, that's how one of the ways, the, or the main way, the owner gets more equity in the company. So owner's equity is going to increase $6,375. Paid $5,000 cash for this month's rent. So uh, that's something that would decrease, that's an expense. So that would decrease owner's equity by $5,000. So it's going to go down. Now, it says cash. That doesn't mean that the company, that somebody in the company went to the bank and took up $5,000 in cash and walked over to another company and plunked it down the desk. It could, but in a normal situation, uh, you, that might mean writing a check and sending it in the mail for $5,000 or some kind of electronic transfer. So uh, we're, they're paying it cash, so it's coming out of the bank account of $5,000. So again, that's the balance thing. The owner's equity went down 5000 The bank account went down 5000 Sold $1,380 of art supplies to Maine College on credit. So their accounts, the accounts receivable to them would increase uh, 1380 right there. And of course, we're sell we're, the supplies are what's going down. So 1380 yeah, the supplies are decreasing. So again, here's the balancing part. Uh, an asset increased 1380 and a, and a different asset decreased by 1380 to balance things out. Harding Gordon District High School paid $1,500 of their accounts receivable. So they owe the company a certain amount of money. And so they owe the 2500 and the 575 So they're paying off $1,500 of that. So the accounts receivable is going to go down $1,500. And to balance that, you see they're, they're giving our Oaks Art Supplies, $1,500, which is going to go in the bank accounts. So we'll put $1,500 there. So again, here's the balancing thing. One asset went down $1,500. Another asset went up $1,500. Uh, number 10, bank service charges totaled $425, and which was paid to the business bank account. So the bank account is going down $425. And so that's something that would affect owner's equity. Owner's equity would go down 425. Borrow twenty thousand dollars from the bank and place it directly in the bank account. So the bank account is going to go up twenty thousand dollars. And the bank loan is going to go up twenty thousand dollars. We borrowed money from the bank, so the bank loan is going to get bigger. And so that's all the transactions. Now what we do is we total them up. So I want to put the total of all the uh, debits right here. So I'll total all those. One of the simplest ways to do that is to use the auto sum figure, or you could actually just uh, type. And we're adding uh, A4 to A8. So it's A4 colon A8. And the same with these. So here we would uh, equals the sum of these three, uh, these, well actually there's, you can't see that number right now, there's a fourth number there. So uh, B4 to B7. And then, notice that this number is of course a lot bigger than this number, so the total of, the, um, the total new balance on the bank account would be this 83,655 minus the 73,55. So we'll put that here. So equals, and it would be A9 minus B8. And so 76,300 sorry, is the new balance for the bank account. So, so this is A14 plus A15. And
and this one here is actually just the same equals b14 and so again the balance is this one minus this one Uh, one way you can do it is just click on the cell. The only thing is I can't click on the cell right here, so I can go plus, and then it's uh, A21. And B21. And so it'll be this one minus this one. And so we're actually just summing the two of those. So, and that's D15. And the same with the equipment. I'll sum those two, put that below it. I'm using the, I'm clicking on the auto sum feature. You can't see me clicking on it here, but that's what I'm doing. So equals, uh, that's H7 minus, oh, I didn't do the total. Well, the total is going to be G6 when I do it. So let's Now, I just got a an error here because I actually wanted to put here the 800. And actually, I noticed my formula equals G6. It actually should be G5 because G6 is the same as G5. So uh, this comes down here. You can't actually have uh, a cell equal itself. You get a, a circular reference warning. If you heard a beep beep, that's what that was. So basically, that's 800. I added these two to get the 9700. And this 8900 is that minus the 800. So that's what goes in there. Um, this one here is just that amount. Same here. Just bring that amount down. I'm going to sum the two of those and put that right there. And I'll sum the two of these and put that right below there. And the same with the. When you click on that uh, auto sum, it looks like the, a, a sigma. Um, you just you highlight what you want to add and click on it and it puts it in the, in the cell below. So here we would put this one minus this and then that's the new owner's equity balance. And so I've done all of those. So now I want to make my trial balance and then of course if everything balances I can make my new balance sheet. So for the trial balance right now it's blank but I want to put all these in the trial balance and then I'll, I'll carry all the uh, the figures over. So I'm going to stop the presentation for a minute because you don't need to see me typing those all out and I'll resume it in a moment. So here's all the accounts. So what I'm basically going to do is copy all these, these amounts over. So bank is 76,300. So I would go over my trial balance and in here I would put 76,300 and back to the T account. Uh, the accounts receivable for HGDHS is fifteen seventy five, so I would put fifteen seventy five here. And I would just keep on doing that the entire way through. Now that I have all the numbers in, and notice uh, it's proper format to have a dollar sign on the top one and to have commas in here, so um, that's the proper number format and the, the dot zero zero or any sense you have. And the uh, Notice that these are all the liabilities and the owner's equity. They're credit balance accounts, so that's why those numbers are uh, in the right-hand column. So this whole sum here should equal this whole sum here. Remember, assets should equal the total of all the liabilities and owner's equity. So for the total here, I would add these. So right in here, I'll type sum, and what I'm adding is D7 to D11. So right in there I'll type 
d7 colon d11 and close the bracket and that's the total and right in here uh, I'm going to add these four so I could use the auto sum or again I could just go equals the sum and it's uh, e12 colon e16 and of course they're the same now if they're not the same then what you should do is go back and look at your T accounts and maybe you missed a number. Uh, maybe that's all it is. Or you put a number in the debit side when it should have been the credit side. So those are common reasons why these don't uh, equal one another. Uh, it's common format to put a, uh, uh, a dark line on the top. So if we go to borders, we we'll put that right on the top and then a thick line on the bottom. So that's the common uh, uh, format to put that in. So now that these balance, we could take these numbers and go to the September balance sheet and put all those numbers in, and then we get the balance sheet. So I'm going to pause the uh, while I put all those numbers in. And so there's all the numbers typed in. So again, we would total this, and uh, that's the total assets. So equals, and it's the sum of the numbers in the column D from D8 to D13. So D8 colon D13. Hit the enter. And of course that should be the same balance as we had in the trial balance. And we would uh, total all these and put that sum right there. I'm just going to use the auto sum. It's a quick way to do it. And then of course we we add the total liabilities and the, the uh, owner's equity and get this total here. So equals this plus this. I could use the sum finger, but I'm only adding two things. And of course, those two are the same, so it balances, and of course it should. If those aren't the same, then check out and figure out why. Um, it could be as simple as, you know, something was entered as a debit when it should have been a credit or something like that, or you typed a number wrong. And that's the end of the tutorial.